And Dave, let's start with this WWE MLW lawsuit. What's going on here? Well, <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, I don't know all about it. No one knows anything about it unless they saw the front page. Um, What's this all about? Well, MLW has sued WWE in uh, court in, in uh, U.S. District Court in Northern California, claiming that uh, WWE has infringed on various business deals. Um, I can, let me get some of the wording. Is Basically, 2B TV located out of California, or why is this? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay. located in San Francisco. They're complaining they're, uh, intentional interference with contractual relations, intentional interference with prospective economic relations, and the violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Um, the main claims include uh, that they claim that when they were on um, Vice, they had they had one show on Vice, and then they remember there was the big announcement of the Vice deal, and they had one show, and then that was it. And they claimed that um, WWE called Vice and told them that Vince is pissed, and that's why they got kicked off Vice, which is weird because WWE doesn't have any programming on Vice. But they claimed that WWE had a relationship with Vice based on um, Dark Side of the Ring, but Dark Side of the Ring's ripped on WWE. So it's kind of a weird one. Um, I mean, there is a... There is a connection to, in, in, in a sense that um, A&E is part owner of Vice and WWE does have a connection with A&E, but it's still, we, it, it's a weird one. The other one with the Tubi thing is less weird and it's a story that, I mean, story went around when it happened. So last year, if you remember, um, MLW announced that they had a, major deal and it was the Tubi deal and they had sent out press releases and they were about to announce it um on um on i forget the day i think it was august 10th and then on august 9th it's like hold up hold up hold up there's something and i guess that they got a message from Tubi that the deal was off and they claimed that stephanie mcmahon had called up Tubi and said that uh, and threatened and said that if you put these guys on then we will pull off of Fox and so um, you know they got told that they were off so um, and they also claimed that they didn't list any instances but they claimed Wait, that hold on a minute Stephanie McMahon said they were gonna pull out of their Fox deal that's the yes. story that's what so Smackdown would no longer be on Fox yes okay Yes, that was the threat. Um, somehow, I don't think that they legally could do that, but who knows? Um, so they claim that um, to be, you know, nixed the deal, and they said that they were in, the, they were making a bunch of deals. Then when the to be deal, um, you know, got canceled, that they. Um, dropped negotiating with other places and then when they tried to restart negotiation the other places had already moved on so um you know that's the main stuff they claimed wwe had tried to uh sign some of their talent that was under contract and that's probably true <laughs> you know because wwe did that with ring of honor and wwe did that with everyone wcw i mean it's you know, I mean, that's they've had a history of doing that since the beginning of time. So, um, you know, nobody has sued them over that other than um, Ring of Honor threatened them with a suit. And that actually led to them uh, having to delay using uh, taking anyone from Ring of Honor. There was, remember that period, was that period where they wouldn't touch anybody from Ring of Honor. Um, and then they had to wait till the Ring of Honor guys were like the Kyle O'Reilly and I'm cool were out of their contract and then they still had to wait a certain amount of time before they would bring them in so um, that's about the only time I've seen anyone like threaten legal action against them and kind of you know um, make them kind of back off so you know it's the I guess the the, the main thing that's so interesting to the suit, maybe more than anything, is the lawyers MLW has because it's um, Mark Kasowitz, who's a very famous lawyer. Um, you're not just him, but I mean, all three lawyers are, you know, 
very there it's from the Castlewitz law firm they have an office in new york and office in san francisco and they are you know uh Kasowitz was considered you know in some places like the best lawyer on wall street he used to represent trump until 2017 um and the other lawyers are very you know highly rated lawyers as well um uh christine uh, montenegro is uh you know listed as one of the top female lawyers in new york and um Jason Takanucci is also considered, you know, he's he's a San Francisco based lawyer and he's considered a real top lawyer. So either they're spending an incredible amount of money on legal fees or, or um the the case is going to be contingency. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, cuz something like this could go on for years. The um you know, I got messages from Jerry McDivitt, who will probably be defending WWE in this case, who basically said that they should be, if their deal was uh, with Tubi, that they should be, you know, if they had a contract with Tubi and it, and it fell through and they had signed it, they should be suing Tubi. I don't, you know, why are they suing WWE, which is a very good question. And then the other one was, you know, their first show on Vice did bad ratings. And in fact, it did bad ratings. It was... um they were on after the dark side of the ring. The basic gist was that um, Vice was in, you know, Vice was doing very good ratings with Dark Side of the Ring, and they were hoping to keep that audience for another hour with professional wrestling after Dark Side of the Ring. And they'd actually talked with New Japan, and New Japan did not like the deal, so New Japan did not take the deal. But MLW did take the deal. They would have been, you know, the next one that they were interested in and MLW put a show on and they were hoping to keep half of the dark side audience and they only kept like under just under 30 percent so it was not it was 40,000 viewers 16,000 and 18 to 49 so uh, you know those were not good numbers and then they were never on again but they said that they'd had a um you know they had a deal for more shows um that uh you know, and, and, you know, things like that. So that's the gist of the lawsuit. But the lawyers are very interesting. Um, and, you know, those, I don't, I, I don't see lawyers like that taking a bad case. Um, you know, and the other thing is, is that, um, you know, I mean, WWE will try to get the suit dismissed. That'll be the first thing they try to do. If they fail to do that, and it goes to discovery, you know, I mean, who knows what will happen there. The last time um, somebody had, you know, this this process will take forever. But the last time uh, WWE had a case that was about to go to discovery, which was the, the Saudi case, I mean, um, you know, they avoided that. Of course, that was a very different case. But, you know, if they have witnesses to prove this, um, you know, because they certainly claim that they would have witnesses from um, 2B and um, Vice because they described conversations, you know, in both cases. Um, you know, the the conversation with Vice where um, Sue Levinson of WWE, you know, supposedly called them up and said, you know, Vince doesn't want these guys on the air. Um, the the way the conversation was described they said that the person from um vice said you know this is illegal doing this and it's just like well vince is insistent on it so um you know it's it's um if that actually happened and you know i mean they you know and they also talked about um besides the uh contracts interference with wrestlers also the wwe um, blocking venues although the MLW I mean MLW was not the size of company that would want to go into the venues that WWE goes into now you know does WWE has WWE worked to keep other um, wrestling companies out of venues that they run absolutely that's you know that's 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 happened since the beginning of time um, it's one of the reasons why um, there's only been two shows um scheduled i believe for madison square garden one of them ended up being moved to the felt forum which was the triple a show which 
they weren't able to block, you know, um, they did attempt, it was the, the Ring of Honor and uh, New Japan show a couple years back that sold out on the first day. And, um, you know, they did get that block. Paul Levesque called up Madison Square Garden and said, you know, we don't want you uh, booking that show. And they canceled. And Sinclair, like they did with the other one, I guess Sinclair's like 2-0 and against WWE when it comes to uh, this type of stuff. So Sinclair threatened to sue Madison Square Garden and Madison Square Garden because they said that they had a deal for the date. So Madison Square Garden backed off and told WWE that uh, we're giving them the date. And they went and sold out, which WWE um, has not been doing in Madison Square Garden, of, you know, at that time. And, and now the last show did terrible, you know, by, you know, I mean, it was, a, was the third lowest in 65 years or something. Um, so that um, that was the deal there. So those, those are the main things that they're, you know, talking about in the lawsuit. Um, but, yeah, I. I, I, I don't think that the goal is to go to, you know, they're asking for a jury trial. They're asking for the jury to um, assess damages. They did not say, like, you know, we're suing for a million dollars or we're suing for $10 million. We're doing, suing for $3 million. They asked, they, they want to go to a jury and they want the jury to assess damages. So, um, a jury trial. But I don't, I can't imagine it going that far. So, I'll have to wait and see. It's probably going to be. You know, if they can't get it thrown out, um, they may, they'll probably try to transfer it to Connecticut. I'm sure that that will be an attempt. Um, and then, you know, the thing will probably play, you know, there's probably going to be a, a lot of different twists and turns in this thing, um, over the next couple of years. But, uh, it is the first time that an existing company has filed this kind of a lawsuit against WWE. Obviously, companies, you know, done other things, you know, threaten legal action and stuff like that. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.